In this tutorial, I will show you how to control a push button with your Raspberry Pi. We will first make the circuit together step by step, and then you will see how to read the button states from the code. So first, just read the button state, and then how to detect a change of state in the button, for example, to know when the button has been pressed or when the button has been released. And let's first create the circuit with the Raspberry Pi and the push button. So first of all, make sure to power off. So to correctly shut down and power off here, you don't, you should not have any uh, cable here, any power cable. And then you can also remove the SD card because uh, if you manipulate your Raspberry Pi with the SD card inside, you may actually damage uh, the SD card. So let's put it on the side for now. All right, now you take your push button and your breadboard and you can put the push button on the middle of the breadboard like this okay so just on any uh, line it doesn't really matter okay just like this you can then take a female to male wire so preferably a black one because we are going to use it for the ground so we are going to connect one side of the button here you can see for example the left side with one of the GPIO, which is a ground pin, which is the third one on the left. So you start from the top left and you count one, two, and three, and you have a ground pin here. Okay, so make sure you correctly connect to the right one. And then you take another wire here, so any color you want, I have chosen green, and you are going to connect it to another leg of the push button. For example, that one here on the right. And then we are going to use GPIO number 16. And GPIO number 16 is actually the third one when you start from the right top GPIO here. So one, two, three, that one. All right. And we are not going to use any external uh, resistor here because we are going to use the internal pull up or pull down resistor of the Raspberry Pi. So now the circuit is complete, you can put back the SD card on the slot like this, and then you can power on your Raspberry Pi. Okay, and once you have correctly powered on your Raspberry Pi, you can go to your Raspberry Pi operating system desktop or any other operating system you are using, and we are going to write the code to read the button state. So you can use any text editor or IDE you want. Here I am going to use Funny Python IDE. Okay, so you can do file a new. Okay, I'm going to create a new file from scratch. And we are going to use, so in order to read the uh, button state, we are going to use the rpi.gpio library with Python. So import rpi, so rp uppercase and i lowercase dot gpio as GPIO. You can use this so it's easier to use uh, the library in the code, okay? You don't need to write all of that, you just need to write this. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a global variable here, all uppercase, which is kind of a constant, so button pin is equal to 16. So that's the GPIO number we have for the button, okay? So I can use button pin instead of 16 in the code which will make it more readable and more scalable. After that, I am going to do gpio.setMode with gpio.bcm. This line is important because if you don't put that, the actual number that's gonna be used is the Raspberry Pi pin number. But you want to use the GPIO number, which is more practical. So by using this, we can actually make sense of the GPIO number 16 here. Okay, this is the setup. Now what we need to do in order to read from the uh, pin or the GPIO, we need to set this pin as input. Okay, so we can do GPIO.setup with button pin. So this is the first argument. The second argument is, so GPIO.in for input. And then we can add an optional third argument, which we are going to do here. And this is to choose if you want to use the internal resistor as a pull-up or pull-down resistor. Okay, we haven't added any external 
resistor in the circuit. So we are going to use the internal one. So you can add pull up down is equal to GPIO dot PUD underscore and you can use down if you want to pull down a resistor or up if you want a pull up resistor. I'm going to use PUD up, okay? Which means that by default, when we read the button state, if we don't press on the button, the state is gonna be high or 3.3 volt. And when we press on the button, the state is gonna be low or zero volt. All right. And then we can read the button state with gpio.input button pin. This is going to give us high or low depending on what we read okay, from the button. So actually this will give us a value. So we can do something with that value. We can say that, for example, if gpio.input is equal to gpio.low, then we can maybe add print button is pressed. So we compare this, this is going to give us low or high. So if this is low, it means that the button is pressed because we have a pull up resistor, okay? If this is not low, which means that it is high, it means that the button is not pressed. So button is not pressed. So this is going to read the button state once. And then what we can do at the end of the program is to add gpio.cleanup. So this is quite important. Whenever you use the rpi.gpio library, it's recommended to use gpio.cleanup. This is a best practice, okay? This is going to clean up any GPIO. It's actually more important when you have a GPIO set as output, okay? Here we use only input, but basically this is a quite important line to add at the end of your program so you can be sure that you don't have any problem in the future because not putting this can actually be quite risky and may burn some of your pins if you do things wrongly. So as a best practice, always do gpio.cleanup at the end. Now, I'm not going to run the code like this. What I'm going to do is instead of just reading uh, the button state once and then exiting, I'm going to continuously run the button state until we press Ctrl C on the terminal to stop the program, okay? So while true, and I'm going to select all of this, press tab, so that this is now inside the while. And of course, I'm not going to read at full speed because that's gonna use the entire CPU. I am going to add time.sleep with let's say 0.1 second. And I'm going to, of course, import time here because I use time here. So this basically is going to read the button states 10 times per second and print button is pressed or button is not pressed. So very important to add a sleep here in your program so that you don't use all the CPU. Here it's gonna use very low resources. And now, well, the thing is that we have added a while loop, an infinite while loop, but if we press Ctrl C from that while loop, we will not be able to execute the gpio.cleanup because the program is gonna exit from one of those lines here. So what we can do is to handle the exception. So I'm going to add try here, but all of this inside the try, which means that I'm going to add another indentation here, okay? And then come back here to the same indentation as the try, except keyboard interrupt like this. And I am going to put GPIO cleanup inside the except. So with one indentation. This means that we're gonna enter the try, we're gonna do this, and when we press Ctrl C, instead of just exiting from the program, we are going to go to line 16, accept keyboard interrupt and execute this block of code, which means we are going to clean up the pin and exit the program, which is much cleaner to do. All right, so here is the complete program. I am going to save it, Ctrl S, as let's say button.py. And now to run this, well, if you just press on the play button, 
the control C exception will not be uh, correctly handled. So you could use the shell here or just use a terminal. I'm going to use a terminal here, which is also very simple. So I have put this script inside my tutorials folder. You can see the script is here, button.py. And so I can do Python 3 button.py. All right, and let's run that. And you can see button is not pressed and I am going to press on the button. Button is pressed. I release, button is not pressed. Button is pressed. I release, button is not pressed. So it's working. I press Ctrl C and we correctly exit from the program. Okay, I'm going to come back to the Thony Python IDE. So this is a code that allows you to simply read from the push button and know when it is pressed or when it is not pressed. And now I am going to improve this program so that we just don't read the button state, but we actually detect when the button state changes. So this is usually a more useful thing, okay? You want to know when you have pressed on the button or when you released the button, okay? This moment. And so basically to do that, what you need to do is you need to continuously read the push button state and keep the current state and compare it to the previous one. Okay, if the previous one and the current one are different, it means that the button state has changed. As simple as that. So for the code, we have this, which is the same. Okay, the setup phase is exactly the same. And then, uh, so for the while loop, we're going to change the code in the while loop. But then the try except block is the same because we're going to do stuff with the button here inside an infinite while loop. And we also want to keep the feature to catch the keyboard interrupt. So catch the control C and clean up the pin. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove this code here and write the new code for the new application. So first of all, I'm still going to add a time.slip this time, maybe not 0 0.1, but 0 0.01 seconds. So we are going to rate the button state at 100 Hertz, so 100 times per second. I am going to do button state is equal to gpio.input button pin. So now I save basically the state of the button inside this new variable. What I'm going to do also is I'm going to create a new variable here. Um, let's do that here. Previous button state. Well, actually, let's not put that here. But after we have set up the pin is equal to gpio.input button pin. So we are going to, uh, just after we set up the button as input, we are going to read the button state. So the first one and put it inside the previous button state variable. Then we enter the while loop and we get the new button state. So what we can do now is we can do if button state is different from the previous button state, it means that we have a change of state, all right? In that case, we do previous button state is equal to button state, so the current one, and we then do our action, so the, the stuff we want to do. And this action is actually, for example, let's say that we want to print something when the button has been released. We can do if button state, so the current one, is equal to gpio dot um, high, okay? Low corresponds to priced and high corresponds to release. And let's say print button has just been released. Okay, so basically this, every time you read the button state, you compare to the previous one. If the previous one and the current one are different, then you do an action and you, of course, save the current state as the previous one. So then the next time you enter the while loop, you're going to compare with the latest value. And then now, when we are in this if, we know that the state has changed. So with this additional if inside that one, we just check if the uh, state is high, which means that we have two information here. We have the first information that the state has changed and the state is high, which means that we have just released the button, okay? And if you put low, it means that you have just pressed on the button. 
So now I'm going to save this file, go back to the terminal and run that code again. Okay, I press enter, you can see we have nothing and I'm going to press on the button and release the button. You can see button has just been released. Okay, we just have this event. I press, I release. I press, I release. And now I press Ctrl C on the keyboard and the program stops. All right, so now you know how to control a push button with your Raspberry Pi to read the state and also to detect a change of state. If you liked this video, subscribe to get more tutorials like this in the future. Also, check out my online courses so you can learn Raspberry Pi step by step in an efficient way by practicing and directly going to the point. Links in the description. All right, thank you for watching. See you in the next tutorial or in one of my courses.